Hey everyone, Jason McGee here. Uh, this is part two in the series of IBM Workload Deployer 3.0 uh, demos. Um, in this video, I'm going to walk through the deployment of a simple application um, to the cloud using Workload Deployer. So to get started uh, with Workload Deployer, to deploy an application, the first thing you do is go to the Patterns menu and select Virtual Application Patterns. Uh, virtual application patterns are the way that you can use the platform as a service features within Workload Deployer to simply bring your application to the cloud, define the basic structure of your application, and deploy it without having to worry about uh, middleware, middleware configuration images, uh, how to configure clusters, or any of the complex uh, behavior that's required to support the execution of your application. So to do this with Workload Deployer, um, you create a virtual application. So here you can see the virtual application patterns um, window, which shows the list of all the virtual applications that I have defined and access to within the cloud. These could be applications I've defined or applications that my peers have defined and shared with me. Um, to create a new application, I simply click the plus button um, at the top of the list of virtual applications, and I get presented with a menu that allows me to see um, the types of applications I can create and some templates for common applications that I can start with. You can see by default I have a blank template which lets me define anything I want. Um, there's also a JEE web application pattern uh, template which represents a simple uh, application comprised of a single web application and a single database. Um, for this demo I actually want to walk through the process of creating things from scratch um, so you can see how the whole um, process works, um, the kind of fully flexible model. Think of templates as a kind of shortcut that gets you closer to where you want to be without having to do some of the, um, the more basic work. Um, so we're going to pick the blank application template and click start building. And this is going to launch me into a tool called the Virtual Application Builder. Uh, the Virtual Application Builder uh, is a tool that allows me to define uh, applications, define the components of those applications, how they relate to each other, and to set the properties of the application and policies that control the behavior. On the left of the Virtual Application Builder, you see a palette, which is comprised of application components. Here I'm building a web application, so I see things that make sense for web applications. I have user registries for security. I have web applications for uh, things like WAR files. I have databases. I have uh, queues. Um, I have connections to existing resources like existing databases in my enterprise or existing resources on the mainframe. I use this palette to define the major components of my application and link them together. In this simple example I'm going to deploy the DayTrader application uh, which is a single web application that's connected to a single database. So from the palette I can select uh, the web application object, drag that off the palette and drop it on my canvas um, and say okay I have a web application. I give it a name. I'm going to call this DayTrader. Um, and I specify the WAR file that implements the DayTrader application. Um, so I go to my local file system and select uh, the WAR file that makes up this application. That WAR file gets uploaded to the server. It gets scanned on the server. Uh, the scanning process is a way that Workload Deployer looks at the application, tries to learn from it uh, information about dependencies that that uh, application has, and presents those dependencies back to you so that you know um, whether you've completed the process of configuring this application. So in this example, uh, when the DayTrader application was scanned, um, the system told me that this application expects to have a connection to an existing database and that existing database should have a JNDI name of JDBC slash trade data source. So it's learned that automatically and provided me with that help. Um, I finished configuring the web application by giving it a context root and now I want to satisfy that dependency. So I'm going to drag a database from the palette so I can define the database that makes up this application. Now again in this model, I'm actually deploying the database to the cloud as part of the application. I'm not using an existing database that I already had, but creating a new one. So I give that database a name. Um, I can give the actual database uh, itself a name, a description, so I kind of know what database I'm talking about. I can specify the amount of disk space that I think this database requires. Um, and then, most importantly, I provide the schema file that describes the table structure of that database. That gets uploaded to the cloud. I now have the web app defined, I have the database defined, but they're not connected together. And so you can see I still have this warning saying that the web app expects to be connected to a database. So to do that, I simply connect the two components together. Um, on the properties for the connection, I can simply select the data source, since it knows that that's the name it expects from the list. And I've now configured the connection between the web application and the database. 
So at this point, I've, I've completely defined this application, everything that I need to deploy to the cloud, and I can save it. So I click Save, I give it a name, give it a description if I want to, and I've now saved a virtual application pattern which represents the ability to deploy this application to the cloud. I leave the tool and I get present drop back into the list of virtual application patterns and you can see here I have um, the day trader application now in my list of applications. Um, if, now let's say I want to deploy this application, actually run it on the cloud. So I click that uh, deploy button uh, in the upper right hand corner. I give the deployment itself a name. I select a, a cloud that I want to deploy it on that's managed by Workload Deployer. And, and Workload Deployer kicks off the process of defining uh, or deploying this application to the cloud. Now it's going to take a few minutes to define the structure and to kick off all the infrastructure necessary to deploy that. So I can monitor that progress by going to the Virtual Application Instances panel. Um, and here you can see uh, the day trader application deployment. This is actually now the running instance of this application. And you can monitor on the right the status of the different virtual machines that make up that application as they come up. And you can see in for this deployment, since it was a simple app, I didn't talk about high availability or scaling or anything like that. Um, I, I simply have um, two virtual machines that make up this application. I have one virtual machine that represents the database and a second virtual machine that represents the web application. So I have two VMs that are launching uh, and coming up um, and they will go through the process of configuring and connecting themselves together. So what's happening during this process is the VMs are being launched. They're being loaded with the appropriate middleware. So Webster App Server in the case of the web app, DB2 in the case of the database, those uh, that middleware is being configured. Um, my application components are being loaded into it. The network is being configured so that um, I have external connectivity to this application. Um, the firewall uh, firewall within the virtual machine is being configured to allow the appropriate inbound and outbound traffic for that application. The client connection, the JDBC drivers, and the data sources are being defined to connect the application. Monitoring infrastructure is being configured so that this application is monitorable in production. All of the work that's required to set up and configure and provision this application is happening automatically for me um, simply by providing that description of the application. So that'll take a few minutes to run um, and then we can see what's happening. Now, once the application's up and running, uh, of course you want to be able to access it, but you also want to be able to manage it. You want to be able to understand how it's performing. You want to be able to make configuration changes and perform operations on it. And you want to be able to do problem determination and debug if something goes wrong. And so with virtual applications, IBM Workload Player not only handles the initial provisioning or setup of that application, but it also provides you control and access to that application throughout its life cycle. So now that this application is up and running, if I want to actually monitor it and control it, of course this panel here, the Virtual Application Instances panel, shows me the basic status, that things are running, that they're green, what their IP addresses are, and gives me some basic visibility. But if I actually want to dive in, I can click on the link in the upper right hand corner that will bring up the Virtual Application Dashboard. Now the Virtual Application Dashboard uh, or Virtual Application Console um, is a UI specific to this instance of the application that's running on the cloud that gives me visibility into that application, its details, and gives me control over the execution of that application. The Virtual Application Console is made up of four key sections. The first is Virtual Machine Monitoring, which gives me visibility into the virtual machine resources um, that are being used by the application. Remember, in this application we had two virtual machines that were supporting the web app and the database components of the application. For each of those, I can bring up a view that shows me memory, processor, network, and storage metrics for that running virtual machine that's used by that application. So I can get basic visibility into um, the consumption of virtual machine resources associated with this application. Now, I probably want to see more than that. In fact, what I want to see is some metrics that um, are specific to the type of application that I'm deploying. So in this case, I was running a web application. And for a web application, there's other things that you want to be able to see. And that's what the middleware monitoring section is about. When you click on middleware monitoring, you get presented on the left with a list of roles that make up this application. So there's a web application role that's part of this virtual application. 
And, that, and for each role, I can present it with an appropriate set of metrics that make sense for that application. So for a web app, I can see things like request counts, service times, transaction manager statistics, JDBC connection pool statistics, Java heap utilization, uh, and memory statistics. The types of things that make sense for uh, a web application um, are presented in the middleware monitoring view. The third section of the, of the application console is the operations section. And the operations section, again, presents for each role of the application um, key configuration information um, and key operations that can be performed. So you can see here, I have kind of three key roles. I have the, the web application role, the database role, and an SSH role, which is an advanced role that allows me to enable SSH access into the application components. Um, for each of these roles, um, I have a set of operations and configuration properties that can be modified. So here you see the, web, the, the role for the web application. Um, I can do things like install emergency fixes, update trust store certificates, um, and update the configuration, like replace the WAR file with a new version of the WAR file in place without having to redeploy, or change passwords, or change timeouts. If I click on the database, I see a set of database appropriate operations. Um, I can create a new database image, which is essentially a backup of the database. I can update the configuration of the database, like changing the, the user password and the DBA password. So the operations section provides me control over the configuration and operations that I perform on the running application in the cloud. The final section of the console is the logging um, panel. The logging panel gives me a single central place that I can go to to view all of the logs that are used by all of the components of the application from a single place. So I don't have to log into the VMs with SSH. I don't have to dig around in directory structures. Um, from the virtual application console, I can see all of the logs for everything that makes up this application. Um, regardless of the type of software it comes from, I can view those logs, I can tail those logs, I can download and search them. Um, so a really convenient way to see all of the log information that makes up this application. Um, so that's the virtual application console. It's kind of the heart of how I see and control a running application on the cloud. If I close the console, I get back to the workload deployer main interface. Um, back here at the virtual application instances view. Um, there's a few other things on here worth pointing out. Uh, one of the really handy ones is this endpoint link. Uh, if I click on the endpoint link, it brings me up information about how to access that resource. So for the web app, the endpoint points me to the URL that I can use in my browser to actually access that application. Uh, if I clicked on the endpoint link for the database, I would be given the JDBC URL that I could use to configure a connection to that database. And with that, um, that's how you get started with deploying uh, an application to the cloud. Hopefully you see that um, the main interaction that I had as a user was to just talk about my application and its components, its properties and policies. I didn't have to deal with virtual machines, with application servers and middleware. I didn't have to deploy and install products. I didn't have to write automation. I just got to focus on my app, describing my app to the cloud, deploying it, managing it, accessing it. Um, a really simple model for deploying applications. Um, in the next video, I'll walk through how you take that same simple application we just deployed and add some more advanced concepts to it, like elasticity, auto-scaling, high availability, and how Workload Deployer makes that just as easy uh, to deploy that complex configuration as it does to deploy this simple application. Thanks.